Okay, so we're going to prove that the limit as x approaches 3 of 4x minus 5 is equal to 7 by using the epsilon delta argument. Okay, so um, first I'm going to write what I want to show, right? So want to show. So this is how we prove this using the epsilon delta argument. Okay, so we want to show that for every epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta greater than zero such that the absolute value of x minus three um, is less than delta implies, right, that four uh, x minus five minus seven is less than epsilon, okay? So um, notice where I got these numbers, right? x minus three, right? x approaches three, so x minus three is less than delta. And the 4x minus 5 minus 7, right, that's where I got those guys, is less than epsilon, okay? So this is what I want to show. If I can show that for every epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta greater than 0 such that the absolute value of x minus 3 is less than delta implies the absolute value of 4x minus 5 minus 7 is less than epsilon, then we're good to go, okay? So... Um, this is actually not part of the proof. This is just what I want to show. If I can show this, then I'm good to go, right? Uh, another thing that's not part of the proof that's going to help us, right, is um, some scratch work, which is um, typically done in these types of problems to help us figure out that delta, okay? So let's write some scratch work, okay? So we're gonna start with our conclusion and figure out from the conclusion what our um, delta can be, okay? So let's see. Um, we have absolute value of 4x minus 5 minus 7 less than epsilon. Well, doing some arithmetic, I know that uh, 4x minus 5 minus 7 is 4x minus 12. So that's going to be absolute value of 4x minus 12, right, is less than epsilon. And then, um, let's see, I can factor out a 4 from here, right? Um, technically, factor out an absolute value 4, right? So, factor out the absolute value of 4. x minus 3 is less than epsilon. And, of course, the absolute value of 4 is just 4, right? x minus 3 less than epsilon, okay? And then, look, um, to figure out what delta I should pick, um, I'm really close to x minus 3 is less than something, right? But I have that 4 here. So what I can do is I can just divide both sides by 4 to get what I need for my assumption. x minus 3 is less than epsilon over 4. So it looks like I found, it looks like I found my um, delta, right? You see that x minus 3 is less than delta, x minus 3 is less than epsilon over 4. So now I can actually start the proof. So proof using the uh, epsilon delta argument. We're going to let epsilon be greater than zero. So any epsilon, right? That's part of what we need, right? For every epsilon greater than zero. There exists a delta greater than zero. So we're just going to list what that delta we chose. That delta we chose um, is going to be epsilon over three. So and choose delta to be equal to epsilon over uh, 4. Did I say epsilon over 3? Epsilon over 4. Okay, so now um, remember for the want to show, we have, um, we start with the assumption that for every epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta greater than 0, such that absolute value of x minus 3 is less than delta. So we're going to start with that. Absolute value of x minus 3 is less than delta. This implies, since we chose delta to be epsilon over 4, we're going to say x minus 3 is less than epsilon over 4, right? And then we're going to do um, just basic arithmetic to get what we want, right? We want, to get, we want to get from x minus 3 is less than delta to 4x minus 5 minus 7 is less than epsilon. So we got to move the 4 over here by multiplying both sides by 4. So this implies that um, 4 times the absolute value of x minus 3 is less than epsilon. And then uh, we can do uh, we can distribute the 4 into the absolute value. 
This implies that the absolute value of 4x minus 12 is um, less than epsilon. And then, of course, we can rewrite 4x minus 12 as, uh, let's see, absolute value of 4x minus, we needed what? 4x minus 5 minus 7, right? So 4x minus 5 minus 7 is less than epsilon. So look what I have. We have, um, thus, we have, right? We let epsilon be anything greater, any, we, we let epsilon be anything greater than zero. So we have for every epsilon greater than zero, right? There exists a delta, we chose delta to be epsilon over four, there exists a delta greater than zero. And of course, if epsilon is greater than zero, then delta, when we have delta is equal to epsilon over four, that's going to be greater than zero, right? There exists a delta greater than zero, such that if we have x minus three is less than delta, that implies, right? Implies we did all the math to get to uh, four x minus five minus seven is less than epsilon. We actually got what we needed, right? in order to prove that the limit as x approaches three of four x minus five is equal to seven, okay? And that's how most of these arguments go, okay?